Hello and welcome to this NCFE provider webinar. This is a one hour onboarding webinar for new centres on new staff and we'll look at an overview of functional skills as well as the assessment criteria, speaking, listening and communicating as well as further support. My name is Patricia Devlin and I'm a provider development officer for functional skills. My role is to support centres through the planning, onboarding and CPD process for NCFE qualifications. My background's English, having taught it for 20 years, and I'm joined by my colleague Charmaine, who will, who will introduce herself now. Hello, my name is Charmaine Phelps, and I am also a Provider Development Officer here at NCFE, specialising in maths and also digital. So the content for this session, we will be looking at some general information, assessment structure, speaking, listening and communicating, and support. We'll turn now to the support that you can expect from the provider development team as you begin your functional skills journey with NCFE. The provider development team are committed to NCFE's core purpose of promoting and advancing learning. To achieve this, we plan to engage with you in curriculum consultations at three different stages. So we'll contact you when you first gain approval, then at the midpoint to check on your delivery to answer any questions you may have at that point and then towards the end of the first 12 months uh, as you either prepare for assessments or as you feedback and let us know how those assessments have gone. It's important to note that our team, the support that you will get from our team is different to uh, your the support that you might get from your quality assurer, your external quality assurer. So, Myself and Patricia, we are not involved in your uh, external quality assurance reviews. We are also not able to see any live assessment material. So we're purely here to support you with your planning, delivery and preparation for assessments. So during the onboarding period, we'll learn about your centre and specific support needs. We'll cover pre-assessment preparation, signposting to sample papers, key quality assurance processes, signposting to chief examiner reports, and how to access teaching and learning resources. And in addition to the onboarding process, we also have an ongoing programme of CPD, continuing professional development, looking at topical and relevant areas of interest. So we tend to have one math session that I run and one English session that Patricia runs uh, once every single month that you'll be very welcome to come along to. So let's have a look at where you'll find the information of each of the functional skills qualifications. So all of the functional skills qualifications have their own page on the website. So if we have a look at level one English. So you can see at the top, you have some generic information about the registration fee um, and who the, the course is suitable for. If you scroll down to the bottom of this page, you have what's known as useful links. This includes things such as the regulation for the conduct of external and controlled assessments. You have the qualification specific instructions for delivery, um, reasonable adjustments, direct claim status, um, we, you will also find our CPD and training events here, um, the diagnostic and assessment tools and the DFE subject content for English. In the maths pages, there would be maths. If we go back up to the, the top, you can see you've got qualification details, support materials. So this includes things such as the specification. The assessment materials, so here you have things such as the chief examiner reports. Um, for English, you have external assessment practice papers and guidance documents. Um, you also have past papers as well for the English. You will find that for both English and maths, there will always be one paper that requires a login. This is so um, your students can't get access to those because obviously on the website, you can get access to them. Um, there'll always be one that you can keep for a, a mock, and that's on all, all both maths and English at all levels. Also in this section, you will have the internal assessment guidance. So that would be for the speaking and listening, or if you were delivering entry level qualifications. 
external assessment guidance. Next, we have the teaching materials. So here you have um, a mixture of free and paid for materials. So the scheme of work is free, um, but you also have our functional skills resources um, in there as well. And you can have a look at those and um, you can also download samples. But the glossaries are free as well. And we also have checklists which are free. So some further useful information. So online and paper-based assessments at level one and level two are available on demand. Paper-based assessments must be booked six working days in advance. Entry-level assessments are also available on, um, on demand and can be sat any time within six weeks of booking. NCFE guarantee your learners' results within six working days. The only exception to this is when new papers are released and they have to go through an awarding process. This can delay the results. The dates for these changes are shown on the updates page on our website. It is important that centres do not avoid these dates as we need to have enough learners sitting during that window to allow us to decide the pass mark. However, it is something to be aware of. It's possible to book your learners for remote invigilation and you are provided with free automated feedback for on-screen and paper-based assessments. Um, I'll go over this in a later slide, but these, this is really good for, um, feedback for interventions and identifying your, your learners' areas of strength and weakness. And you also have the support from the provider development team through the onboarding process, as well as our CPD training. We'll turn to the EQA visits now. So EQA stands for External Quality Assurer. All internally assessed qualifications must be externally quality assured by NCFE. So for functional skills, this relates to your entry level qualifications, and the SLC for all levels, as these are internally assessed. So you are allocated two EQA visits per year for each sector group, and functional skills has its own sector group. Should you require an additional visit, it is possible to book this um, following the link that we have on this slide. And by all means, if you do need the slides, do just uh, request them and we'll send them over to you. To encourage best practice, we offer a reward system called direct claim status. When you achieve direct claim status, you'll be able to claim learner certificates without needing authorization from your EQA. And you can find more about DCS from this page here. The invigilation uh, requirements changed when functional skills went through the reform and they stated that no teacher of a functional skills qualification level one and level two can be involved in the administration of assessments for functional skills. So a subject teacher of English could not invigilate any of the English functional skills qualifications, whether or not they taught those learners. Now, concerns were raised about this. So there are some exceptions uh, that are allowable on advance approval from NCFE. These include restrictions within the centre on the grounds of security or safeguarding, instances where an assessment is conducted at a learner's workplace and an assessment centre is not available locally, remote location of the learner's workplace or assessment location, or if arrangements need to be put into place to support a specific learner with special educational needs by way of an access arrangement or reasonable adjustment. For all exemptions, centres must have exhausted all possibilities before submitting an exception request. We do have an on-demand webinar for invigilation that looks at possible scenarios and situations. Uh, you'll find that from this page here. Uh, if you're unsure at all, then you can contact our customer support team and we will give you the telephone number on our final slide. You would just need to explain the needs of the centre and then once an exemption has been made, it does last for a whole year. Now, this slide has all of the links for the regulations. So we've got the, this is the general page for assessment regulations and guidance. 
and I'll show you where to find this in a second um, from the website directly, just in case um, you'll, you don't get around to asking for the slides. Uh, you also have the QCID, the Qualification Specific Instructions for Delivery. We've got the regulations for the conduct of controlled assessments, so that's for all of your entry-level assessments. Uh, then we go by the JCQ instructions for conducting functional skills assessments. So if you're coming to us from a different awarding organisation, uh, you will probably find that the awarding organisation you come from also follows these uh, the JCQ guidance and therefore it will be exactly the same. We do have a functional skills supplementary booking document which has any differences. So for example, um, if you book a level one or level two uh, paper-based assessment and the papers they should arrive at your centre three working days before the assessment date and you are allowed to sit the assessment uh, up to three working days before and three working days after um, the specified date for when you booked those papers but you'll find everything within that supplementary booking document and then also for the SLC you've got guidance documents that you will find within the qualification pages. So we've got guidance for assessor for entry levels and then guidance for assessors for uh, level one and level two. And I'll just show you where to find those regulations on the website now. So from the main homepage of the NCFE website, if I click on qualifications, then I go down. Delivery support is where you would find everything related to functional skills. Um, but instead we want assessment support because we're looking at the regulations. So for assessment support, I would go across to the regulations. Um, also, you'll, you'll spot here, we have got things like special considerations, remote and vigilation, online assessment, um, access arrangements, reasonable adjustments, but here we've got the regulations. So if I click here and scroll down, and then there we've got our internal assessment regulations. So there's the regulations for um, entry level functional skills. We've got the QCID, so that's qualification specific instructions for delivery. And then further down, we've got that supplementary booking document. And within that document, that is where you will find the link for the JCQ document. So that's the one that you'll need to take a look at. All registrations for all qualifications are made on the portal. Paper-based assessments are booked on the portal and you will also claim for the SLC on the portal. Please refer to the portal user guide and the uh, we have a recording as well, portal functional skills, and you'll find this uh, recording on our YouTube playlist. For online assessments, you must first register to take online assessments from the online assessments page. And I went to where you can find where that page is just a, just a moment ago. Uh, but you can also just link it straight from these slides. So you need to register to take online assessments. And also on that page, that's where you'll find user guides and the technical specification for uh, conducting our online assessments. So do refer to the technical specification and the user guides on that page. And we have a recording, Surpass Online Assessments Functional Skills. And again, if you don't get around to requesting these slides, you will find that on our YouTube playlist. So go to YouTube, look for NCFE, look for playlists, and then look for the functional skills training playlist. We'll take a look at the assessment structure now. Maths is split between the three core themes of number, shape, space and measure and handling data. As you'd expect in a functional skills maths assessment, a large proportion of the marks are for number. So that's between 40 and 60 percent. What you'll find at harder levels is less emphasis on number and more on the other two areas. So for example, at level two, it's only between 40 and 50 percent, whereas at lower levels is between 50 and 60 percent. The non-calculator section is worth 25 percent of the marks and that comes first 
and the calculator section is worth 75% of the marks. Initial findings from the DfE review on functional skills found that employers were saying employees struggled with basic numeracy skills and in particular non-calculator skills, times tables and percentages. So as a way to combat this, the non-calculator section was introduced. Underpinning skills are assessed at 25%. Problem solving skills are assessed at 75%. So this is why you will find when you look at functional skills assessment questions, you have these contextualized questions that your learners need to determine what math strategies to use when they are um, looking at those questions before they can actually employ their underpinning skills. They need to work out which skills they need to use. And that's actually really a good thing because in life, we don't walk around with a nicely uh, nice looking calculations given to us, we have to work out what calculations to do if it's a maths problem or in our working life, even if we don't do very much maths particularly, we will follow logical steps to come to a solution when we're faced with problems. So these problem solving skills are applicable to your learners everyday life and work and study. Two sections are marked as a whole and learners are either given a pass or a fail. So it is possible to bring the mark up to a pass even if learners do poorly in the non-calculator section, for example. The entry level assessments are based around just one contextual theme, which you can apply to customize to make it more relevant to your learners. It is an externally set controlled assessment that is supervised rather than invigilated. This means that the teacher can be the supervisor for your entry level assessments. It's marked internally and then moderated by your EQA. So we have the guided learning hours here, total qualification time and the way the marks are broken down for the different entry levels are shown here with the timings. So the first activity is always the non-calculator activity and then the next three activities are in the calculator section. From the 1st of September 2024, we are making additional assessor instructions available when you book your entry level maths assessments. When you book the assessment, vocabulary lists will be immediately available in additional assessor instructions. These vocabulary lists can be used with learners up to six weeks prior to assessments. The additional assessor instructions which contain the vocabulary lists, while only made available on booking the assessments, do not form part of the confidential assessment material that must remain secure until the day of the assessment. So once you make your booking, Either if you're making the booking yourself and you'll be able to access these as a tutor or if you need to speak to your exams officer, uh, then access these. Here's an example. We've got the entry level one. Um, this is for the sample paper. So one of our past papers, paper 14. And for this particular uh, topic, which is about horse riding, the vocabulary list is here. And you can use that with your learners prior to your learners sitting their live assessments. So please make sure that you request the additional instructions, assessor instructions, um, before your learners sit their live assessments. The main assessor instructions have also been updated and these will also be available in the updated form from the qualification pages from September the 1st. Additional guidance on the support that assessors can give is included. So we have that here. Uh, contextual words, so the vocabulary is shared in a table and the blank parts of this table uh, simply represent the maximum possible number of contextual words that may one day appear in an assessment. You're, you're highly unlikely to see this many uh, contextual words in an assessment, but um, that just gives the maximum. So important to note that assessors can 
paraphrase and or read other words in the assessments that are associated with the context, but not if they relate to the subject content statements, for example, operators, numbers and or symbols. For level one and two assessments, as I've said, the papers are classed as one paper, but in two sections, and they have to be taken one after the other. The non-calculator section comes first. Once learners have finished this, they'll be asked if they want to move on. Once they've moved on, they cannot go back. The assessor will then, the invigilator will then collect papers in, and then the calculator section can begin and calculators distributed. The non-calculator section can assess any topic that doesn't specifically require a calculator, such as calculating the exact value of pi. There's just one pass mark, so it is not possible for a learner to resit one section of the paper. The result is reported as a pass or fail for the whole paper. And for level one and two, we've got four activities similar to entry level. However, these four activities will each have their own contextual theme. Um, each worth 15 marks in total for that activity. And the questions, you will not find a question that is worth more than six marks. They tend to build up. So you might have you know, one, two mark questions and then building up to the higher mark questions within the activity. A contextual scenario will be placed at the start of each activity so the learner has an understanding of the purpose of the maths. And all questions in this activity then follow on from this theme. Each activity will contain a mix of all strands of maths, so number, shape, space and measure, and handling data. As an example, this opening scenario about Dan and his patio cleaning business comes from a level two calculator paper. The questions that follow cover area, as you would expect when you see a diagram like this, um, but as well as covering area, they also cover ratio, percentages, probability, and calculating the mean from a grouped frequency table. Here's another example of a different context. So here we've got a study in further education uh, context. Richard looks at the marks for his first two assignments. He achieves seven tenths of the total available marks on his first assignment. He achieves three quarters of the total available marks on his second assignment. Richard says he did better on his first assignment. Is he correct? Show how you decide. And there's two marks available. So learners can solve this either by changing the fractions so they both have the same denominator. So for example, uh, we could make the denom denominator 40. So we could have 28 over 40. And that would make this one 30 over 40. And so we can see which one uh, he did better on and then answer the question. So is he correct? No, he's not. Or we may uh, convert them into percentages if, if that's our preference. So this would be 70%, this would be 75%. And again, we would need to say to get the two marks as well as doing um, the comparison and we could, you know, we can compare it as a fraction, we could compare it as a decimal if we wanted or as a percentage, however your learners choose to do it would be accepted by the mark scheme, providing it was a valid method, um, but they would also need to actually answer the question. Is he correct? No, he's not. Uh, other contexts might be a work or workplace context. This question comes from a level two calculator paper and covers content from ratios. So we are looking at packaging. Beth is on a work placement. The company makes biscuits. In 2018, it reduced the number of biscuits in each packet. The weight of each biscuit stayed the same. The weight of a packet went from 135 grams to 108 grams. The 135 gram packet contained 25 biscuits. How many fewer biscuits did the 108 gram packet contain? And there's two marks available here. So to solve this, uh, and again, any method would be uh, acceptable. 
but probably let's look at, we need to find the weight of a biscuit. So 135 divided by 25 will give us the weight of a biscuit. Once we know the weight of a biscuit, we can find out how many biscuits there are in the smaller packet by doing 108 divided by that weight. That will tell us how many biscuits are in the smaller packet, and then we can find the difference so that we actually answer the question. Uh, other contexts might be social and environmental. This question comes from a level two non-calculator paper. So Tara had 1.795 million followers in 2020. This was 250% of the numbers of followers she had in 2019. How many followers did Tara have in 2019? Give your answer in millions. And again, two marks available. Uh, and you may recognize this is a, an original value question or reverse percentages question. So if in 2020 she had a 250% of the number she had in 2019, we definitely know that the number that she had in 2019 is going to be less. So whatever our answer is, we know it's going to be less. To do, actually do the calculation, we can simply do the 1.795 million divided by 250. That will give us the value of 1% of the original. And then if we multiply that amount by 100, it will give us the amount of followers that she had in 2019. Uh, the answer for this uh, would be 0.718 million because we're, we're asked to give the number in millions rather than as a, uh, a long uh, seven digit number. Another example here, this one comes from a level one calculator paper. Uh, we've got a, a leisure context. Andy buys a new kitchen. The kitchen costs 5,000 pound. And he gets a two year loan to pay for the kitchen. He pays simple interest on the loan at 5% per year. How much will he have paid back in total after two years? There's two marks available. And again, there's, there's lots of different ways of working this out and providing your learners use a valid method that will be accepted in the mark scheme. So since it's simple interest, 5% per year for two years, if I find 10%, that will uh, be 500 pounds. So that's the amount of interest that he's paying back over the two years. So in total, he'll be paying back 5,500 pounds. Now with the structure of maths assessments, we would not expect reverse calculation unless it's specifically asked for. However, teaching your learners reverse calculation means that they can check their answers. We provide the units, so um, it will tell you if it's pounds or minutes uh, in, in, the, in the box. Working is marked. There will be questions that specifically ask learners to show your working, or the question may be asked in a different way. So for example, here with this question, it says down below, you must show your working. Okay, so we must show it in order to get those five marks. With this question here, worth two marks, we're given one of these, quite a lot of our questions um, look like this with, uh, we're given some information and position um, about what somebody thinks and then are they correct? Show how you decide. So show how you decide means I must show the working. A simple yes or no uh, is not going to get me the two marks. Uh, in addition, if a question doesn't specifically ask to show working, but it's a multi-step problem, there will be marks awarded for the steps shown in the notes box that indicate how the learner solved the problem, even if they don't get the correct final answer. So as a general rule, please encourage your learners to always use the notes box to make notes as they progress in their problem solving to reach an answer. Here's an example of the mark scheme. The first box in grey contains the required answer with the remaining rows in white showing the method or mark breakdown to achieve this. There's a clear labelling of whether it's UPS, underpinning skills or problem solving. And we have two columns. These are provided to separate the key information. So we've got the process and any additional um, information. 
and we also provide the subject content statement that will be assessed so that's quite handy when you're looking through past papers trying to find you know, particular questions that assess different subject content and again for this question it's a problem solving question if a learner simply writes the answer they will and it's correct they will get three the full three marks however as i've said if they write down their working then it means they can gain at least two of the marks even if their final answer is incorrect so i'll hand back to patricia now for english thank you charmaine so the assessment structure for english is in the three core areas of reading writing speaking and listening you do have the additional structure teaching of phonics to all the entry levels they won't be assessed um, specifically on phonics, but it's there to help with the reading and the spelling. The spelling assessments for entry level um, is, is 10 words and they are taken from the subject content. Um, so each entry level has approximately 100 words in there and they'll be given a spelling of, um, spelling of 10 words from that, so that list. Spelling, punctuation and grammar will be assessed for 50 to 70% at entry level and 40 to 45% at level one and level two. Contextualization is available for the writing entry level assessments. The SLC can be on a topic of your choosing. No dictionaries, that includes bilingual or spell check enabled equipment for the writing assessment and all components must be achieved achieved at the same level so if they're doing level one it would have to be level one reading level one writing and level one speaking and listening so all the entry level reading assessments are 40 minutes with the writing staggered at 35 40 45 as the levels increase you'd have 10 minutes for the spelling um, the guided learning hours are 55 hours with the total qualification time of 66 hours to allow for practice assessments. At level one and level two, um, both the reading is an hour and the writing is an hour. With regards to the spelling lists, as I mentioned earlier, these are provided by the DFE and do include those international phonics symbols. However, the symbols are not needed to deliver the phonics. Um, NCFE have produced spelling lists in a user-friendly format, and these are free to download. These are available in each of the different entry-level pages um, in the resource section. Just a point to note, it would be worth going through the spellings with level one and level two learners, as they would be able, they would be expected to spell all the words from the entry levels. And some of them, especially at entry level three, are quite tricky words, such as calendar and guarantee. So moving on to having a look at the writing assessments. So at level one and level two, it will be made up of two independent scenarios and will look to assess the learners on two of the following. Formal letter, formal report, article, email, review and advertisement. Um, advised timings are also included and spelling, punctuation and grammar is assessed throughout. So here you can see an example. Um, this was a level one. You can see the assessment is about a survey of your local town and a music festival. Um, you can see that activity one is to write an article worth 20 marks and activity two is to write an email worth 20 marks. So they're equally weighted. 45% of the marks are available for the evidence of accurate spelling, punctuation and grammar. Um, you can see it's got allowed 10 minutes for overall reading, planning and proofreading. And then the learners would spend approximately 25 minutes on activity one and 25 minutes on activity two. So guidance on, um, on the word ranges are given for one of the tasks. And this is to ensure that a reasonable amount of words are used to meet the criteria. So online will have a word count, um, but just a reasonable estimate in handwriting um, of what they've been used to. Um, an example of good practice is you could get learners to know what 150 to 250 words look like in their own writing, the number of paragraphs they use, the number of lines that they use, so they're familiar with it. That would be at level one and obviously level two would be 250 to 350 words. The reason the word count was included is to give the learner the best option to achieve because in the past it was a common error to write too little to be assessed. So there will always be one assessment with a, a word count. 
So here you can see this activity is to write an article. So in a recent survey, your local town has been named as one of the top 10 worst towns in England. You've been asked to write an article for your local newspaper describing what could be done to improve your town. And then it gives the learner some bullet points on what they could include. So descriptions of what's good and bad about the town, possible improvements that could be made, and your personal suggestions. And in this case, the, the newspaper has said your article should be between 150 and 250 words. Just a point to note, the email will never be one that's asked for a word count. Um, so the email will always tend to be um, without the word count. The reading assessment at level one is broken down into three tasks. So the first section will use source document one. The second section looks at source document two. Um, the source documents are displayed on the screen alongside the question, so the learner is not moving backwards and forwards. Um, you'll find that there is um, an increase of true and false fact and opinion questions. So if the learner would, would be asked to state some, if something was a fact or, a, or an opinion, rather than having to scan and skim through the document to find that fact or opinion. Section three in level one and section four in level two are the comparison questions. At level one, this is more of a brief introduction to comparisons and will always be between two to three marks at level one. However, at level two, this will have four tasks with that fourth task being the comparison. Um, this is broken down into two um, questions, a three mark and a four mark. Um, and this will need more detail and be longer than um, the level ones. So moving on to the speaking, listening and communicating. So firstly, an overview of how the SRC looks. So entry level one is a one-to-one -one with the assessor and a one-to-one -one discussion with the assessor. Entry level two is a one-to-one -one discussion and a group discussion. Entry level three is a question and answer session and then a group discussion. At level one, we have a short talk with a question and answer session and then a group discussion. And at level two, this is a presentation with a question and answer and then a group discussion. The group discussion, so the task twos, can be done at a different time to the task ones. So some general information. So centres can devise their own tasks, um, but must comply with the information and guidance provided in the guidance document. Any topics used for practice assessments must not be used for live assessments. Learners must be given the opportunity to plan and prepare for assessments. We don't give a recommended time frame as long as the learner is given sufficient time to research and plan as required. Centres may use NCFE exemplar tasks, but not, must not overall, um, alter the overall level of demand. And learners must demonstrate achievement against all subject content statements. The administration documents needed for the SLC. So this will be the learner observation and assessment record. So there's one needed for each learner. We also require evidence of the activity. Any preparation notes should be attached also to the learner observation and assessment record form. The completed assessment tracking document, the internal quality assurance reports, and we require one recording per assessor, per level, per academic session. Um, so that would be running from the 1st of August to the 31st of July. Um, we would just require one recording for each assessor, for each level that they teach. So evidence and feedback. So assessors must complete the learning observation and assessment record form to document the learner's performance. All sections must be completed and the relevant subject contents statements achieved should be ticked and the learner must achieve against each of the subject content statements to pass. Assessors must then use the comment box to summarise the learner's overall performance by using short statements and quotations to show how the learners met each of the criteria and the learner observation and assessment forms must be completed within two weeks of the assessment taking place and then stored securely for when your EQA comes to visit. We did have um, an update in July 2024 in the appendices. Um, so for external quality assurance purposes, centres must provide evidence now of each activity assessed. If a learner chooses their own topic for task one, 
the assessors must ensure it is fit for purpose prior to the assessment. Each assessment task must, must clearly enable the learner's performance against the relevant subject content statement. And the question brief for the short talk or presentation and the topic of discussion must be shared with the learner at least one week before the assessment. Um, and then following the assessment, it should be retained and attached to the learner observation and assessment form. So that's a recent update. Retaining the assessments, so centres will need to securely retain completed and mark assessment materials, whether that's pass or fail, until the EQA has sampled learners and certificates are received. Um, as I mentioned earlier, at least one speaking and listening communication must be recorded or observed by the EQA for each level assessed per assessor per academic session. The documents listed below must be securely retained for a minimum of three years for all learners who have completed their assessment. So that's the IQA feedback to assessors, the tracking document for all assessments that have been sat, and documents created relating to the achievement of learners' assessments. Resit, so learners who have not achieved a pass can resit. Feedback should be provided um, with clear actions on outlining how to improve. Before learners reset this component, further teaching and learning opportunities should be provided. Each assessment task is a standalone activity and is assessed separately. So if the learner fails one of the tasks, they can retake that task. For example, a learner may need to repeat the short talk at level one, but not the discussion. Um, just make sure that the task retaken must be different from the original task. The assessor will need to use a separate learner observation and assessment form for the reset, and all records of the assessment pass or, take, pass or fail should be retained and made available as part of the IQA and DQA sampling. So to achieve a pass, the learners must generally meet the, the requirements of the grading descriptors for all levels. So looking at the evidence required, so the learner observation and assessment record form are available on the NCFE website. There are also exemplars with guidance notes for each level. Um, and so they are available um, in the assessment materials in the internal assessments on each page in the, on the NCFE website. The tracking document, so this is now more compact. So all fields on the tracker need to be completed. You can create your own tracker, but it must contain all the fields that are on the NCFE tracker. So this includes all booked assessments, um, so passed, failed, cancelled and expired. The tracker is to be sent to the EQA two weeks before the planned visit. On the NCFE website, you also have access to example tasks should you wish to use them or to get ideas for um, both the SLC and for the reading and writing papers, we have some reading practice paper guidance. So these break down the questions and um, give you examples of what would be expected. So for example, if it was the reading paper, it would explain what language features you would need to know and give an example of a question. Um, for the writing, it gives you some um, marked examples, which you can then give to your learners to um, mark separately and use the mark scheme to get them familiar, but also see what good practice would be as well. So there is a whole load of support for the English um, delivery within the NCFE website. For the SLC as well, we also have an example of a completed learner observation and assessment record form. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it does give notes on how to complete this as well. And you can see that is found in the internal assessment guidance. And here is just an example. So you can see that they have ticked when they have achieved it. And the assessor comments, you can see it's a mix of summary as well as quotation. The NCFE website hosts subject specific information and assessment information, schemes of work, sample past papers and mark schemes, as well as external links. This page is hyperlinked to our functional skills delivery support page. From there, you can navigate to each qualification page very quickly and easily 
and also find further information specific to functional skills. In the teaching material section of the individual qualification pages that Patricia took you to earlier, we have schemes of work for every functional skills level in English and maths. These are available for use by centres and contain a coherent teaching order. These can also be used alongside internal assessment systems to inform the order of teaching within the individual skills plans and may be helpful when embedding maths and English within a vocational setting. Our suite of resources specifically designed for functional skills, English and maths is a comprehensive package that contains all areas of the coverage and range for functional skills. In our teacher delivery packs, you get interactive PowerPoint presentation resources, uh, some including videos and quizzes. There are worksheets that contain summaries and questions that have been specifically designed in line with NCFE questioning techniques and individual session lesson plans that accompany each lesson topic. Every lesson also has a knowledge checker and everything is referenced to Department for Education subject content statements. So if a learner's diagnostic comes back stating a particular area of weakness or the automated feedback highlights an area, the resources will all map across. To order the teacher delivery packs, you would just go to the teaching materials tab on the qualification page and order from there. And that's where you'll also find the price for the packs. We have workbooks that have been developed independently from the classroom packs, and these are broken down by each subject content statement. For each statement, there's a comprehensive explanation of the subject content statement with tips, quick checks and questions with solutions to help learners comprehend. Each chapter ends with questions to test understanding, and we've combined the answers into the workbook. The teacher delivery packs and the workbooks were developed by different developers and purposely kept apart. So any overlap between the teacher delivery packs and the workbooks is purely coincidental. The workbook formats are digital copies or PDFs and are not interactive. However, you can print them out as many times as you like. The workbooks are particularly useful if you have a roll-on, roll-off delivery, if you have lots of learners in one uh, class who are at different levels, different starting points, so that a full classroom delivery using the teacher delivery packs would not be quite so useful. On the website, in each qualification page, we have a free glossary of terms for maths available for all levels. And for each entry level for English, we have easy to use word lists for spelling and reading. These taken from the Department for Education subject content document and have been made into a more eye-catching document. They're available for free in the teaching materials section of the website and they are word documents. So if you need to add, for example, into the glossary, if you need to add any additional terms into the glossary, then you can do so. We have learner checklists for each level for maths and English. You can download these for free and use them with your learners to identify the areas learners may need further teaching to feel fully confident before their assessment. It basically breaks down the different subject content statements into the different learning outcomes. For maths, we have collated past questions for entry level three, level one and level two. Uh, we have past questions collated by topic, so you may like to use these at the end of a topic. To find them, you would simply go to the maths qualification page, click on assessment materials, and then click on to the past questions collated by topic. When you download those, they open as a folder with these Word documents, so you have these different topics here. And when you open each one, it states at the beginning the papers that these questions come from. They are from fairly older questions, um, so it does mean that your learners will definitely not be looking at these questions if you, uh, when you present them with timed mocks leading up to their assessments. Uh, and it also tells you which subject content statements are being assessed in the particular collation. As part of our commitment to shaping smarter learning, we proudly offer skills assessment and diagnostic tools. 
Whether you're delivering apprenticeships, traineeships or employment programmes, we have initial assessment tools and learning resources to support your provision and set your learners up for success. Our unique diagnostics, resources and summative assessments can transform how education providers approach functional skills. Skills, the main tool that you'll be using is Skills Builder. Within Skills Builder, you have English and Maths e-learning resources and assessments. And from this page, you can book a free demo and find out more about the other products within our Skills Assessment platform. We've also brought together our qualifications, the teacher delivery packs and workbooks with our skills assessment platform as one single product called FAST, Functional Assessment and Skills Together. So you get everything from the skills assessment uh, platform, so individual skills plan, uh, distance travel assessment, 24-7 access online, etc plus the qualifications, plus all of the, the resources that are on the website but have a, a charge, but instead you would just be having the one product all together. If you're interested in FAST, please speak to your account manager and they will give you further information and tell you the FAST plan that would be best suited for the number of learners that you have. We have available online practice for online assessments and you'll find that by going to the delivery support page and clicking on the online sample assessments. Quick link. And when you get to this page, you can then access your English and Maths Level 1 and Level 2 past papers. And here we've got an example of what they look like on screen. So this one's an English one. So they would open this document. It opens uh, on the page so that you can see the questions as well as the document. Um, as well as being able to access past papers, online uh, past papers from our website, you can also book a practice paper through Surpass, which is our assessment platform. We would recommend that if you have not sat online assessments with us before, that you do book a practice paper through Surpass to ensure that your systems are working correctly uh, and that you've tested them out before your learners sit live assessments and before your learners sit live on screen assessments. We would request, please, for you to get them to sit a practice paper or a past paper uh, online so that they know how to use the various different tools and functionality. From this page, the assessment delivery support page, which is a quick link from the functional skills delivery support page, you'll find some information about uh, feedback that you can request, uh, our online automated feedback, and also uh, how you can transfer achievement for functional skills English. So if you have learners who've come to you um, and perhaps they've completed their reading for English, but they haven't done their writing or their SLC, you can transfer the achievement across using the form on this page. Our automated feedback is available for free, and we have automated feedback for on-screen assessments and paper-based ass paper -based assessments. They come back looking like this, so you have the subject content statement, obviously this one's an English one, uh, but similar for maths, you would just have the subject content statement and then the percentage that your learners got um, for that particular subject content statement. So a score of 100% means that for every question that assesses this particular subject content statement, uh, your learner scored the maximum available marks, whereas a score of 50% would mean they scored half of the available marks. This slide just shows you how to access the paper-based feedback and is taken directly from the portal user guide. So uh, it's just important for you to know, particularly if you're a teacher, that you can access this. If you don't have the uh, required portal 
permissions to be able to download your, your learners' functional skills subject content statement reports, then please do request that from whoever is the administrator of the portal at your centre. We also have Padlets for English and Maths that are all housed together on the Padlet that is linked on this slide. We've pulled together all of the NCFE resources and links, as well as some external third party links to resources and tools that are not NCFE endorsed, but many of our providers and ourselves have used them and you may also find them helpful. Our upcoming CPD events for functional skills, maths and English are found from this page. So it's within the delivery support page, you'll find they're listed down as events. We have various CPD sessions, we have drop-in clinics where you can come along with completely informally, no agenda, come along to a drop-in clinic and just ask any questions you may have. We also have a termly teach, share, transform session, one for maths, one for English and one for digital. And we'd love to see you there. These sessions are very much more about you as teachers sharing your best practice with one another. And there are also links from the page to our on-demand events. And if you click on the drop down, that's where you'll find our YouTube playlist. We have a learner toolkit for maths and English that includes some short videos on key areas that learners might find useful. So there's one for English, and there's a, a different playlist for maths and these particular playlists are separate to our teacher training playlists. These ones are aimed towards learners and there's some other useful information like the top tips and the um, past questions collated by topic and the learner checklists on there too. On this final slide, we have the key contacts. Myself and Patricia can support the planning, delivery and preparation for assessments for your English, maths and digital functional skills qualifications. You can speak with your account manager or contact account management using this email address if you've got queries about pricing or resources. And if you have any questions on the portal or surpass, please contact customer support. And for skills assessment, our skills assessment platform or further information on FAST, you can request a demo um, through this website or using the live chat on the link. We do hope you found this onboarding recording helpful. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.